This video is brought to you by Mubi. Get a whole month free at mubi.com slash do cinema. Now, when I say Matthew McConaughey, you say, All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Those are the first three words McConaughey ever said on film. And since then, his performances have become truly iconic and quoted by many. From The Wolf of Wall Street and Interstellar to Dallas Buyers Club, Mud, and True Detective. You can tell this man had one hell of a career and interesting life. But for the longest time, McConaughey was only known for his romantic comedies, which ultimately led to a period of downtime and not getting offered any other roles. I was leading a successful life as an actor. I was the go-to rom-com guy. I liked doing rom-coms. Then nothing came in. Almost a year and a half. I was now shaking hands with the fact I may never work in Hollywood again. So in this video, we're gonna shine some light on the life and career of Matthew McConaughey and see how he went from the rom-com guy to making one of the greatest comebacks now known as the McConaissance. But first, who is Matthew McConaughey? Matthew David McConaughey was born in a small town in Texas called Uvalde, where he lived together with his parents and two older brothers. He later moved to Longview, a booming oil town in East Texas where his dad worked in the gas industry. His upbringing in the Lone Star State became an integral part of his character, later becoming famous for his iconic way of speaking and rugged charm. It's his first day on Wall Street. Give him time. Now, ever since he was young, he kept a journal where he would write all kinds of stories and short poems about his adventures. And all those journals have culminated over the years into his book, Green Lights. During his high school years, he won the prize for most handsome at prom, but he explains he was never the too cool for school guy. I was the guy who danced at the party. I was the fun guy. I engaged. He also had a truck and took the girls off-road mud in after school in the soggy bottom creeks of Texas. He had a speaker that I mounted in the grill. So I could pull up into the parking lot in the morning before school and like a friend of mine, uh, this girl Kathy Cook or something, I could get on my, get on my CB and like duck down and go, whoa, look at Kathy Cook this morning. She is looking. <laughs> you know, echo across the whole parking lot. Everybody, and she'd get embarrassed wondering where it came from. And then I'd hop up and get busted. McConaughey calls his unique approach to life outlaw logic. Because his parents were married three times and divorced twice during their lives, he has learned to steer his course in a way of wheeling and dealing with life, which has worked out quite well so far. Some other interesting facts, he once got arrested while playing the bongo naked because his neighbors called the cops due to the noise. I was uh, playing a little music, <laughs> um, banging on some bongos. Uh, and and you, were, uh, you were naked, is that also I part was, of the deal? I was buck naked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And lastly, there have been rumors that actor Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey, who were co-stars in True Detective, are actually long-lost brothers. His mom had a relationship with my dad right around the time he was conceived. That seems like a big coincidence. People have been looking at these photos and going, yeah, I'll buy it. I'll buy half-brother. <laughs> Now, Matthew didn't always want to become an actor. He had been groomed to become the family's lawyer, but in college, he started having doubts about his plans. And when he told his dad he was skipping law school to go to film school, this is what he responded. I quote, Well, if that's what you want to do, son, don't have acid. And it were those words that gave Matthew the freedom, responsibility, and rocket fuel to walk the path of becoming a storyteller. All right, all right, all right. How you doing? McConaughey's entry into the world of acting was marked by dazed and confused. Matthew was not originally cast for the film, but one night a friend of him who worked as a bartender introduced him to casting director Don Phillips. And after a few drinks, he invited him to go for an audition. We didn't talk about anything but golf and girls yeah. and, and booze. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Say, man, you got to join? Much of his role was improvised or written on the spot, and on the night of shooting, director Richard Linklater came up with a scene where they needed a cool guy to drive the car. So I go get in my car. Now I'm getting nervous. First scene I've ever done. It's not scripted. So I'm telling myself in my head, who's my man? Who's my man? Who's Waterston? What am I? And I go, well, what am I about? I said, I'm about my car. Yeah. And I go, well, I'm in my 70 Chevelle. I said, I'm about getting high. I said, well, Slater's riding shotgun. He's got a Dubois rolled up. Right. I said, I'm about rock and roll. There we go. We got Ted Nugent Strangle holding the eight track and I hear action. And so I look up and in my head I go, well, the fourth thing I'm about is chicks. And that's what I'm, go I'm about to go pick up. And in my mind I said, well, you got three out of four. All right, all right, all right. Those three words marked the beginning of something special and a three day job for a summer hobby turned into a lifelong career. But that's also when tragedy struck. 
Five days into shooting, he got a call from his mom telling him that his dad passed away. McConaughey wrote, My dad was the abominable snowman, the immovable force, a bear of a man, impossible, nobody or nothing could kill him. Two days after finishing Dazed and Confused, he wrote down 10 goals for his life at the age of 23, among other, chasing his best self, taking more risks, staying close to his family, win an Oscar, and above all, just keep living. The saying that would guide him for the rest of his life. During this time, he was able to crash on the couch of casting director Don Phillips, and when Matthew told him he really needed to get an agent to get more work, this is what he responded. He snapped at me. Not dead. You need it too much. This this industry, Hollywood, smells need your one and done, buddy. What you need to do is get the hell out of here. Go with your buddies and go ride motorcycles somewhere. Hell, pick Europe, I don't care. But go somewhere till you quit needing it so much because if Hollywood smells you needing it, you're, you're done. You're never in. So that's what he did. Together with his two buddies he met on Dazed and Confused, they decided to go to Europe for a month, rent motorcycles, and just ride. About a week later, after I returned, my first two auditions in Hollywood from that agent, I got the job. Sandra Bullock, <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson, and Matthew McConaughey in the movie version of John Grisham's A Time to Kill. I look at him sometimes and I see a young Paul Newman. If they're setting him up to be the flavor of the month, it's going to be a very long month. It was in the following years that the ball started rolling. He might not have become an actual lawyer, but he played one damn well in this movie. This is also when McConaughey won his first big award for Best Breakthrough Performance. Matthew McConaughey. Alright, alright, alright. Damn glad you got your eye on me. Just keep living. Man. It was after this movie that he started struggling with his newfound fame. It troubled the relationship with his mother, he lost his privacy, and felt like the world became one big mirror. In his book, he writes about having a dream of floating down the Amazon River. He felt the urge to escape the hustle and clear his mind. And so he decided to pack his bags and went on a three-week solo trip to Peru. I have gone away many times on my own. Um, I've learned to enjoy the solitude, not necessarily enjoy my company in the solitude, which usually the first 12 days I do not enjoy my company. Mm. Um, I'm shaking demons off my back, feeling regret, lost, confused, trying to figure stuff out. And usually around day 12 or day 13, I'll have a breakthrough. Time slowed down, just like that slow moving river, for the first time in months, I was at ease. When he came back, he bought a caravan and started living on the road together with his dog. He writes, now fully self-sufficient, Mrs. Hud and I became what the trailer world calls full-timers. Our compass, wherever we wanted to go. Our schedule, whenever we wanted to go. This period of traveling helped McConaughey come to terms with himself and gave him time to make plans for what was about to come next. After having lived on the road for over three years, McConaughey knew he needed to get back to Hollywood and start the hustle again. It had been a few years since his last box office hit, A Time to Kill. He writes, I was still a bankable star, but my shine had dimmed. I'd lost some heat, as the industry calls it, and I was losing my hair. But then, he got offered to star in a romantic comedy alongside Jennifer Lopez titled The Wedding Planner. And so, a new chapter began. This movie catapulted him to mainstream attention, and by the early 2000s, McConaughey became synonymous with the romantic comedy genre, starring in a series of similar box office hits such as How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days and Failure to Launch. These rom-coms paid fairly well, and so he decided to move out of the van to something a bit more domestic. So for the next two years, he made his new address the legendary hotel Chateau Marmont, a high-class hotel where many celebrities were doing anything God forbid. How the fuck else would you do this job? Cocaine and hookers, my friend. As Matthew writes, ready to rock and roll, cashed out that healthy check from the studio, bought a pair of leather pants and a nice motorcycle, wrote the chateau a running tab of 120 grand, and got the key to my room until whenever I turned it in. I also had the key to the hotel's kitchen, which I conveniently used to find and cook 3am steaks. Matthew was single and ready to mingle, but during these 18 months of hedonism as he calls it, many critics stated that McConaughey was underachieving and that those rom-coms like Fool's Gold were nothing more than forgettable movies. But McConaughey's response to that was, I was rom-com McConaughey, shirtless on the beach, and I looked that in the eye, and still do, and go, you damn right I was. And those rom-coms paid rent for those houses that I had on the beach where mm. I went shirtless. But despite his success in rom-coms, when it came to his performances and purpose, 
he wasn't fulfilled. My life was being designed for ease, he said. And as an actor, once you're typecast, it's very hard to get out of that mold. I was leading a successful life as an actor. I was the go-to rom-com guy. I like doing rom-coms. They paid well. But I still said, boy, I'd sure like to do some work that challenges the vitality that I'm feeling in my life. And that work, dramas I was were not being offered to me. And so I talked to my wife, I talked to my agent, I talked to my business manager, uh, saying, look, I may not work for a while. I was in a position where I had to save my money and been frugal with it, because I'm not going to do the films I've been doing. During his rom-com years, he traveled to Mali. He had shaved his head, grew a beard, and embarked on a journey across the Niger River, visiting small villages, wrestling with the local men, and learning about Muslim culture. Here he lived with the Dogon tribe, known for their knowledge of the stars far before modern astronomy. The Dogon star, a phenomenon deep in stellar space. No such orbiting star is visible from the Earth. It was not until this century that Western astronomers began to suspect its existence. These walkabouts, as he calls them, were a way of coming to terms with himself, to be his own character in the movie called Life. A few years later, he met his wife Camilla, and he had his first child. The one thing he knew he always wanted to be, a father, now came true. And my life was so vital. I had more rage, I had more joy, I had more happiness, I laughed louder, I cried harder. It was just my life, the ceiling and the basement of my emotions were full. He decided to stop accepting every rom-com coming in and went on a two-year break from acting. So I go on the sabbatical away from Hollywood. I say no to every rom-com script that comes into me. I even turn one down for fourteen and a half million dollars. I shed many a tear with this choice. It was scary. And trust me, my family, my brothers and mother and everybody thought I was out of my freaking mind. And when the word got around Hollywood that I did that, I think part of Hollywood said, oh, all right, McConaughey's not bluffing. <laughs> okay, quit sending him romantic comics. He's really not doing them. Then nothing came in for over a year, almost a year and a half. And I was now shaking hands with the fact I may never work in Hollywood again. And then as life happens, Hello? Lincoln Lawyer. Killer Joe. Mud. Bernie. Magic Mind. True Detective. Dallas Buyers Club. All the things that I wanted just came to me and I just said, okay, here we go. What followed was a period of revival and renewed interest in McConaughey. As he writes, I was a rediscovery. And now, it was time to invent. It was this transition from rom-coms to more challenging roles that later earned his status as one of Hollywood's most respected actors. The McConaughey we are getting now is more authentic, even if that reveals something more grimy. You got one chance to turn around and leave. He made his movies more personal. Making Mud reminded him of his old treehouse, because like those boys, he also had a secret hideout, a place of wonder, danger, and dreams. Well, that's true for now, but you call me a bum again, I'm gonna teach you something about respect your daddy never did. And everything he had been mocked for, his shirtlessness and love of the ladies, came together to make a tragic figure in Magic Mike, one who flaunts these talents for dollar bills in a trashy nightclub. And for Dallas Buyers Club, he lost 50 pounds portraying a rodeo driver on the fringes of society, an outlaw who discovers he has AIDS. During award season, his new series True Detective was airing on TV, and as McConaughey describes it, it was the best advertisement money couldn't buy. You wonder ever, you're a bad man? No, I don't wonder, Marty. World needs bad men. <laughs> and the Oscar goes to Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to the Academy for this. Mm -hmm. 
At the height of the Reconnaissance, we saw him starring in probably his most famous movies, among other, The Wolf of Wall Street, and in that movie, every line became iconic. It's all a Fugazi. You know what a Fugazi is? We don't create shit. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. High frequencies. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> the chest beating and humming was all improvised. It was simply a way for McConaughey to relax and warm up his voice. You can see Leonardo looking at the crew like, what is he doing? I was doing it before takes and then Leonardo had the idea of saying, of saying, why don't you put that in the scene? So I did. The Wolf of Wall Street perfectly portrays McConaughey's outlaw logic, the philosophy that made him a hustler. Work hard, play hard, following the rules until you're man enough to break them. One year later, he's starting Christopher Nolan's Interstellar, which is up there with some of the highest rated movies ever, about a father traveling to outer space to save mankind, but no matter how far away he is, the love for his family is universal. In recent years, he stole the show in his movie The Beach Bum, starring none other than Snoop Dogg. I think certain people in life are meant for each other. I think me and Matthew were meant for each other, and it's just... I agree. It's, it's I think they do. It's like bongs and bongos came together. <laughs> McConaughey's character Moondog seems a lot like himself, goofy, wild, and a poet trying to finish his new novel. And right after the scene, I just feel like, man, I'm not sure that was prop. And I let go, and Snoop goes, yo, Moondog, that wasn't prop weed, that was Snoop weed. <laughs> In hindsight, those years as the rom-com guy and taking time off was not a period of recognizing his limits as an actor, it was a deliberate choice to reap the benefits of fame, self-protection, and recharging of the batteries for a far more dangerous McConaughey. As he writes, it's all about catching those green lights and realizing that the yellows and reds eventually turn green. But there was one more thing McConaughey had on his list. After starring in all of these movies and putting so much effort into making these characters come alive, he felt like his life on screen had become more vivid than his life off screen. It was time to make a change. And so he began writing his book. Time to get rid of all the filters. Make my life my favorite movie. Live my favorite character. Write my own script. Direct my own story. And live my legacy now. Quit acting like me. Be me. He started inspiring other people with his life story and set up a foundation for empowering high school students to make healthy choices for a better future. A foundation he titled Just Keep Living, named after his calm acceptance that everything will be alright. If there's anything I would tell my 15 year old self and I'm told that I've taken a lot of risks, I would say take more. When we're embarrassed of failing, we don't want to fail because the world looks at us and goes na 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 boo boo, I say you know what? As far as I can tell, those people that go na 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 boo boo when you fall down and fail, they're on the sidelines for a reason. <laughs> they're on the sidelines. Any of us, whatever those things are, whatever it is we look up to, whatever it is we look forward to, and whoever it is we're chasing, to that I say amen. To that I say all right, all right, all right. To that I say just keep living, huh? Thank you. The older you do get, the more rules you're gonna try to get you to follow. <laughs> You just gotta keep living, man. L-I-V-I-N. <laughs>so if you want to watch some Matthew McConaughey movies after this, I got you. Because The Beach Bum is currently streaming on Mubi. Not only in my country, the Netherlands, but in many other countries. Mubi is a curated streaming service dedicated to elevating great cinema. A place to discover ambitious new films and singular voices. From iconic directors to emerging auteurs. And the best thing is that they are all carefully handpicked by Mubi curators. Streaming anytime, anywhere. We we'll work anytime, anywhere. We work Jewish holidays. Anytime, anywhere. You can try Mubi free for 30 days at mubi.com slash do cinema. That's M-U-B-I dot com slash do cinema for an entire month of great cinema for free. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to be notified when I post a new video. Check out the links in the description and some of the projects I'm going to be working on. I am looking forward to connecting with y'all. So in the meantime, and all times, just keep living.